Hello and welcome to our sixth video in this work from home video series addressing various topics with conveyor drive problems. Today's topic is inadequate power and it's April 15th. The video was sponsored by Romeca Corporation and I'm your host, Mike Gowinski. We're a major supplier of motorized police for the U.S. materials handling market and we're headquartered in Wilmington, North Carolina. We're part of the International Romeca Group a major supplier of rollers, motorized pulleys, pulleys and components for the global materials handling market. And we're headquartered in Bergamo, Italy with affiliates in 24 countries around the world. Effective March 30th of this year, we were designated as essential during the COVID-19 response. So we have continued production and repair of motorized pulleys in our Wilmington facility. However, all of our administration and sales staff are working from home as I am today. And this video is prepared for anyone working from home who is interested in belt conveyor operations and design. We recently launched our online consulting and training service with good response, I'm happy to say. And this uh, online service is available in, four, in three formats. Our 10 to 20 minute online discussions will put you in touch with an engineer who could help you with your specific conveyor drive problem. We also have 30 or 40 minute classes addressing six standard conveyor drive topics. And we've decided to cancel all seminars for 2020 and replace them with webinars. These will be presented in 60 minute sessions and they will include both lectures and workshops. Our next webinar will be April 21st at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Today's topic is inadequate conveyor drive power. As in all of our other talks, we recommend that you identify your conveyor drive problem, request technical assistance, consider a technical solution, and then obtain and consider a commercial offer. And it's always important to note right at the outset whether or not you're talking about a new project or a conversion of an existing system. What are the reasons for inadequate power? Well, the wrong equipment could have been installed or the correct equipment was originally installed but something changed, such as handling rate or type of material, ambient conditions or something like that. And what is the failure mode? Are you experiencing minor occasional motor tripping once a month? Or are you experiencing major motor burnout or major conveyor uh, drive mechanical failure, shutting you down for hours or days? Well, we would recommend this is how you would check for inadequate power. Measure amp draw, make physical, inspections, review your operating parameters, and do power calculations. And we can, of course, help with the power calculations. These can be done simultaneously. Measuring amp draw. This is where electricians would get involved. And you should compare, we would say, your actual draw of current under full load conditions with the FLA, full load amps, printed on the data label of the motor. Make sure that your overcurrent setting is correct and make sure if available thermal protection is connected as well as overcurrent protection. The maintenance staff can get involved in this step. They can inspect for carry back beneath the idlers. They can check to see whether or not belt cleaners were added or are now too tight or if skirt board seals were added or they're too tight or if uh, some idlers are not turning due to failed bearings. Maybe the belt is mistracking. Uh, it's also possible that hopper pressure relief could have been damaged or is missing. Now, operations and engineering can also get involved in uh, diagnosing the problem here. And operations folks would be able to know whether or not the handling rate increased. Did the material change? Or is the weather condition different now than it was when it was originally designed? Is the belt speed, is the belt speed different than it was originally? Belt speed can increase or decrease required power, you, even though that's counterintuitive, it's possible. Did the inclination angle of the conveyor change? And then of course, it's very uh, useful to perform power calculations and compare the install drive system with what the calculations say is required. And we would recommend sensitivity analysis be done to isolate the problem and zero in on what the problem may be. These are the app sheets, which you can download from our website and send in uh, specifying your problem. That's a big help. Now let's define some terms. An essential term is TE, which you can see on the upper right hand portion. 
TE, defective tension. That's the tension that you need to calculate to figure out um, how to move the product in the conveyor. Another very important tension component is T2, slack side tension. This is the equation that we use to determine how much belt tension is required to overcome friction, gravity, and momentum to move the product. Once we know the amount of tension in pounds and we know the belt speed in feet per minute, we can easily uh, convert that, uh, that answer into horsepower in the way that you see specified there. This is what the uh, sheet would look like from us. If you fill out in app sheet, this is how we would respond. Um, you can also download the program from our website. Of course, it's essential to input the current parameters, the current rate of material, tons, to tons per hour, belt width, belt speed, lift height, and so forth. The program will enable the user to calculate belt pull and required power. It'll help in pulley selection. It'll even uh, make it possible to check special loading conditions, verify radial load is adequate, and this is where um, sensitivity analysis can be done, trajectory plots, material cross sections can be done, and you can optimize belt speed versus belt width as you zero in to uh, finding how to resolve the inadequate power problem. And the program is also designed to enable the user to try a dual drive option as a means to solving the inadequate power problem. We have minor problems, we have major problems. A minor problem might be something such as an occasional motor trip. Uh, it may be possible to simply make some physical adjustments such as replacing idlers or adjusting a belt cleaner to eliminate occasional nuisance tripping. We absolutely recommend that you never adjust the overcurrent protection. If the full load amps of the motor is four, as in the example in the upper right hand corner, if, you're have a, if you are having motor tripping, do not change the overcurrent setting to six amps because you just negated the protection. If you're having a major motor burnout problem or some mechanical failure, it may be necessary to, mod it may be possible to modify the system, maybe modify the handling rate or the belt speed, and we can help with that. It may not be possible to modify the handling rate or the belt speed, and therefore may be necessary to replace the complete existing drive with a more powerful drive. And an alternative which we would like you to consider is the addition of a second drive to the existing system that can be done and has been done. And as in all of our other presentations, we're going to be contrasting internally powered conveyor drives with exposed conveyor drives, as you can see pictured here. If the installation of a more powerful drive is needed, one single drive, it's straightforward. Take the old one out, put the new one in, and it's always important to verify that the power supply circuit can handle the increased current draw of the more powerful motor. Now, here's where we would recommend you consider something that maybe you didn't think of until this point. You can actually add a conveyor drive to an existing system to provide more power. The case you see pictured here is a radial stacker in which a 30-year-old 100 horsepower drive at the tail was supplemented with a new 60 horsepower drive installed at the head. To do this, it was necessary to uh, drive each of the two motors with uh, variable frequency drives, and they needed to be set up to do proper load sharing. Here's an example of a much smaller application in which a tail drive was added to put more power into the conveyor. And here's an example in which a single drive, which had inadequate power, was replaced with a dual drive system. This was discussed in a previous video for a different reason. The original drive system of 75 horsepower did not have enough power to start up a fully loaded conveyor if it tripped out under full load conditions. And therefore, the suggestion was, this actually was installed years ago, go to a dual drive system with a 50 horsepower at the head and a 50 horsepower at the tail. This provided more than enough power to start up the conveyor under all startup conditions and also had the side benefit of eliminated belt bounce when starting up in an empty condition. The reason uh, a motorized pulley is able to be installed in a supplementary position on the conveyor belt is because it simply bolts into a mechanical take up or onto a structure in a simple manner. Anywhere a pillow block bearing could be bolted 
a mounting bracket for a motorized pulley can be bolted. A tricky thing when putting it into a mechanical take-up would be to make sure to festoon the power cord, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner. And when necessary, we recommend that two VFDs be installed, one to drive the second new drive and one to drive the original drive so that they could be load balanced. And of course, it goes without saying that an internally powered drive is hermetically sealed and self-lubricating. If you request assistance from us and you want to consider a commercial offer, it would look like this, specification, part number, price, delivery promise, and so forth. And that concludes our short talk on how to address inadequate power. Thank you for spending time with us. And I remind you once again that our Solving Six Conveyor Drive Issues webinar is coming up on April 21st. And you can easily register for that by going to our website. Don't forget that consulting and training is available from us. And I draw to your attention our growing library of video tutorials, which you can find on our website and our YouTube channel, along with all of the webinar recordings and all of the work from home videos. Just go to RomecaCorp.com or go to our YouTube channel. Of course, we encourage you to contact us via email at sales-us at romeca.com or call us at the phone number that you see there. Thank you for listening to today's presentation, and I would encourage you to try to do what we're doing, which is to keep our chin up while we endure through this virus crisis. Thank you.